Hello, today I'm looking at uh, Magma car number 90, which is the Kanaka Tala Sutta, and that's basically translated as, translated as at Kana uh, Katala. Now the location is Ujuna in Kanaka Tala Deer Park, and the people mentioned are King Pasanadi of Kosala, uh, Buddha, variously referred to in the Sutta as Gotama, uh, the Blessed One, and Tathagata. There are also two sisters mentioned, Soma and Sakula, and General Vidudaba, Sanjaya, a Brahmin of the Akasa clan, and Ananda. In fact, I've actually not included the bit about Sanjaya. So. Um, anyway, uh, this sort of starts um, with stating that Buddha was residing at Ujjana in the Kanakatala deer park. Now, it just so happens King Pasanada of Kosala is visiting Ujjana and he, he asks an emissary to go pay homage to Buddha, inquire after his health, and ask that the king Pasanada may visit him. When the two sisters, Soma and Sakula, heard about the arranged visit, they asked that King Pasanadi pay homage to Buddha on their behalf. So on meeting Buddha, King Pasanadi passes on the message with greetings from the sisters Soma and Sakula. Buddha replies, but great king, could the sisters find no other messenger than a great king? The king explained, that is not the reason for his visit. It is just that the sisters overheard he was going to visit Buddha. Now, king Pasanadi then goes on to explain the reason for his visit. I have heard thus, the recluse Gotama, Buddha, says there is no recluse or Brahmin who is omniscient and all-seeing, who can claim to have complete knowledge and vision. That is not possible. Is this true? Is this what Master Gotama's teaching say? Buddha replies, this is not true. It misrepresents me. Here, King Pasanadi turns to his army general, King Buddhadaba. Who introduced this story to the palace? It was Sanjaya, sire, the Brahmin of the Akasa clan. King Pasanadi then orders that Sanjaya be brought, be summoned to his presence. Meanwhile, whilst waiting, King Pasanada said to the Blessed One, could something else have been said by the Blessed One, referring to that, and the person understood it wrongly? Is what... In what way does the Blessed One recall making that utterance? Utterance. I recall having actually made the utterance thus, replies Buddha. There is no recluse or Brahmin who knows all, who sees all simultaneously. That is not possible. So the difference between what the, the misquote by Sanjaya is the word simultaneously. King Pasanadi agrees to know all, to see all, simultaneously, that is not possible. And of the four castes, the nobles, castes or classes, social classes, nobles, Brahmins, merchants and workers, <clears throat> is there any distinction or difference between them? Buddha replies, of the four social classes, the nobles and Brahmins are held to be superior, since men pay homage to them. The king explains to Buddha that he, the king, was not asking about the present life, but about the life to come. So Buddha explains, there are five factors of striving. The first, where a follower, a bhikkhu, places his faith in the Tathagata, i.e. Buddha, his enlightenment that the Blessed One is accomplished, <clears throat> fully enlightened, perfect in true knowledge, 
incomparable leader, knower of worlds, teacher of gods and humans. Secondly, where the, Buddha, uh, where the bhikkhu is free from illness and affliction, to be able to bear the strain of striving. Thirdly, that the bhikkhu is honest and sincere, showing himself as he actually is to his teacher and his companions in the holy life. Fourthly, that the bhikkhu is energetic in abandoning unwholesome states, steadfast in cultivating wholesome states. And fifth and lastly, he is wise. He possesses wisdom regarding rise and disappearance that is noble and penetrative and leads to the complete destruction of suffering. These are the five factors of striving. So of the four of the four social class classes, O great king, nobles, Brahmins, merchants and workers, if any of them possessed these five factors of striving, it would lead to their welfare and happiness for a long time. The king replies, so if all the social classes possessed these five factors of striving, would there be any difference among them? Buddha suggests the difference would, would lie in the diversity of their striving. Buddha gives an example. If there were two untamed animals, say horses or oxen or elephants, and two tamed animals of the same species, if the untamed were to be tamed, would the untamed acquire the same characteristics as the tamed? Yes, Venerable Sir, King pa says Pasadini, King Pasadini. And conversely, would the two tameable, tameable animals that were untamed, being untamed, naturally acquire the behaviour of the tamed? Would they arrive at the grade of the tamed? No, Venerable Sir, replies King Pasadini. Pasanadi, sorry. So too, great king, Buddha continues, it is not possible that what can be achieved by one who has faith, who is free from illness, who is honest and sincere, uh, is energetic, who is wise, can be achieved by one who has no faith, who has much illness, who is fraud fraudulent and deceitful, who is lazy and not wise. King Pasanadi agrees, says what Buddha states is reasonable, and then goes on to ask, so of the four cl social classes, assuming they all possessed the five factors of striving, and if their striving was right, would there be any difference in that respect? Buddha replies, there would be no difference, this time taking an analogy of burning wood. If each man lit a fire with different wood, from dry saka wood, from dry sala wood, from dry mango wood and dry fig wood, would there be any difference in the fires? No, venerable sir, replies the king. So too, great king, when the spiritual fire is kindled by energy, lit by striving, there is no difference between the deliverance of one or other. The king agrees that it appears reasonable, reasonable then asks the question, but, venerable sir, how is it? Are there divas? Do the divas come back to this human state or do they not? Uh, so divas, are, are divas or devas, um, meaning gods. Great King Buddha replies, these divas who are still subject to ill will will come back to their human state. Those devas who are no longer subject to ill will do not come back. Now there then follows a discussion between King Pasanadi's Pasa son, who is General Vidu Daba, and the Venerable Ananda. So it's almost like King talks to Buddha, the General talks to Ananda, where the General asks, and here I've taken the Tanisaro translation. So can the afflicted devas out, 
oust and expel the unafflicted devas that come back from that place. So can the afflicted devas oust and expel, or expel the unafflicted devas that come back from that place? Venerable Ananda replies by way of a counter question. Is the king able to explain excuse me, is the king able to expel a Brahmin from the lands that he rules, <clears throat> regardless of the state of merit of that Brahmin? Yes, came the reply from the general. <clears throat> excuse me. And general, of those lands that King Pasanadi does not rule, can he exile a Brahmin regardless of the Brahmin's merit. No, he cannot, comes the reply. Then Ananda asks if the king can banish the gods of the 33, which is part of the Buddhist Hindu cosmology. The general replies, the king cannot even see the gods of the 33, let alone banish them. The same with the afflicted devas, Ananda says. The afflicted devas who will come back to this life, cannot see those devas who are not afflicted and do not come back to this place. So how could they expel them? King Pasanadi says, um, says the answer from Ananda is reasonable, reasonable, but also asks, <clears throat> is there Brahma does he, and does he come back? Now, the complication here was that... Um, in the uh, Nanamoli Bodhi translation, Brahma's in the singular, uh, in the plural, beg his pardon, and in the Tanasaro translation, it's in the plural. So, um, and Brahma is the, is not Brahmin, Brahma is the he Lord of the heavenly realm of rebirth, the Brahma Loka. Uh, so, as I say, initially the king refers to Brahma in the singular and Buddha replies in the plural as follows. So the question was, just to go back, is there Brahma and does he come back? Buddha replies, any Brahma who is subject to ill will comes back, any unafflicted Brahma does not. So that can either mean there's more than one Brahma or we're talking over a continuum of time, continuum of time and the Brahma is replaced by a Brahma. So, so in summary of that, all that conversation, King Pasanadi says to Buddha, we approve and accept the answer from the Blessed One about omniscience. We approve and accept the answer about purification in the four social classes. We approve and accept the answer about the Devas, and we approve and accept the answer about the higher Brahma. And here it's plural. Hmm. Having delighted and rejoiced in the Blessed One's words, and after appropriate homage, the king departed. So ends Majjhima number 90, the Kanakatala Sutta. Thanks for watching.